makes a really nice string and you would be pretty impressed i think with how strong this string can be hello and welcome back to another episode of stockman originals i'm here to show you another little trick we do with basswood we've gone over things like making the backpacks and and stuff like that and of course i use the wood left over from the backpacks to carve and the wonderful wood to carve probably i don't think any better another thing that you can do with basswood is make cordage. The inner fiber of the bark is so strong that you could, in a pinch, make a survival bow string with it or a fishing line or tie your shelter together or, you know, as clever as humans are, we have great ideas, but you really almost always need a piece of string to make it work. I've got a piece of bass here. Let's get these, uh, these great, beautiful, heart-shaped leaves that's a that's a tell on uh what you're looking at and it's serrated too which is another thing to note and this is a sucker this is a, a sapling a young tree i prefer to use young trees this is roscoe oh, say hello roscoe hey he's gonna help me oh no i like to use the suckers or saplings the younger trees because for some reason the fiber in the bark is a lot finer and st seems stronger to me, easier to work with. Every time you try to <laughs> cut one down, all these suckers come up. So there's always a good supply of them around here. So anyway, I'm gonna peel a piece off. We're kind of getting past peeling season, but basswood still peels because the fiber is so strong and that a lot of trees like maples and things like that or beech, <laughs> the bark will tighten onto the wood and then you need, uh, explosives to get it off it breaks and really sticks to the tree but you can see even though it's kind of drying out the tree it still peels off in great long ribbons so that's all the way down to the wood i've got the entire bark here the inner bark this smooth surface that's where the strength is now you can use a piece of bark like this to tie a you know lash a, a shelter together or anything like that or any kind of real quick need type of tying but when you do use a strip like this you always want to tie it this way so that the outer bark is on the inside because the outer bark will crack and i'll show you that in a second but the inner bark won't and that'll make it just as tight strong it's, a, it's comparable to rawhide now as i said when you turn it this way you can see it cracks right along the fold there that is actually the start of my cordage making process so you crack it like that and you hold it kind of together like that and just work it a little bit back and forth and it starts to delaminate into layers okay and i'm gonna use a stick here to separate the layers it's a little helper okay. so we're working it i'm going to uh Insert that stick through there. Okay, so with the sticks, the stick stuck through. <laughs> I use it to uh, strip off and separate the inner bark from the outer bark. The outer bark doesn't have a whole lot of use for me, so it gets kind of put in the decay pile. So now we've got a nice strip of the inner bark. You get more strength out of your cordage the finer you break the fibers down. So you're gonna wanna split them down. I'm just using my thumbnail, okay? Into nice little ribbons. You can make, I mean, if you got time to make tools to do this sort of thing, you can file out a little kind of a comb, to break it apart. You can use a piece of bone, like I use that stick to uh, help break it apart. Tree just fell down. <laughs> I was in the woods, so I, it made a sound. I heard it. So you can see it's falling, uh, falling apart into nice little ribbons, little threads. You keep kind of working it with your thumbnail. I've seen um, or heard that some natives would file little notches in their thumbnail so that they could break bark down quicker and sinews, things like that. Sinu makes great cordage, of course. So, take your little bundle of threads 
and twist them. Okay, what I do, if you get just gonna start a string, you can twist it until it kinks. See how it's kinking there? And then you can kind of uh, give it a little additional twist and it makes a nice little bundle. So you hold that in your left hand, prepare your two hanks of thread by twisting them. You twist them both in the same direction, okay? And what I do is I roll first the bottom one down and catch it in the crotch of my finger like that. And then I'll take and twist the top one to match in tension. And then the bundle that I'm holding in my left hand, I give that a little and the bundle just got longer. So when you do that, it's all kind of, you know, twisted in on itself and it holds, it won't come unraveled and it makes a really nice string. And you would be pretty impressed, I think, with how strong the string can be. So it doesn't take too long to get a bit started. All right, so I want to take it down far enough to show you splicing it in. So I get to the point where I'm starting to run out of fibers here and you don't want that to always happen like at the same place on both sides. This one's close, but I think we can still pull it off. At this point, what you do is you take some more fiber. Noisy boys. Take some more fiber and where am I? This is the thinner hank, so I'm gonna just lay those fibers in to that bundle letting them stick out the back here and then you twist them all up together again and you're right back to it holding it with your middle finger index and thumb to the top one and then your left hand twists the, the bundle in and a couple of twists like that and this splice is buried and just as strong as the rest of the string you take and, and you can bite that off clip it off cut it off whatever you got for tools at the time and make these little whiskers disappear. I have friends in the background telling a story. I have a family of ravens here that are trying to fill the void in between my chatter and they stay with me all. Well, they don't really stay with me. I wish they would, but they're in the neighborhood all summer long because I have pigs and pigs get fed good food and ravens like good food. So they've made friends with the pigs and they sit around and sing all day long. Isn't that pretty? All right, so I've got a, a nice little bundle here. Now, what I'm gonna do is make a loop in the midst of the string. Like say you wanted a, a bow string, right? And you wanted obviously a, a loop on one end for the, for the knot. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're gonna come down here and get the show. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so now I, I have two bundles here. Instead of the one before that I twisted up and then it kinked and you know, I'm gonna hold the two bundles separate. Okay, get them started. There it is. All right. So then I just twist the two bundles here up like I would have that little uh, kink I made and basically do the same thing here, four a ways. Okay, so there I've got a nice little start. So now, see I've got tails on both ends here, right? I'm just gonna bring this right around to loop, and I'm gonna join the, ta the tails into two pairs. And then twist them up, using the, the loop now to, as my little bundle. So anyway, that gives you the idea of how you can put a loop into it, no knots, and it's good. It'd be a nice way to start a necklace, you know, and then put a button on the other end, got a good closure. There's a lot more that can be done, but that's for you to do <laughs> in, uh, in your journey through this. Thanks for, uh, for sticking with me on this and hit the like and all that. I love your comments. Definitely let me know what you're thinking and um, hit subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> Thanks, we'll talk to you later, bye.